my goal here is if tomorrow you have interview about scrum scrum any question they ask i'll tell you any questions you will 100 percent answer it no doubt 100 percent you will clear the interview now choice is yours either you pay attention or you don't pay attention but if you just attend today's class tomorrow if you have interview about scrum you will pass like this make sense so you don't need to have hundreds of years of experience let me repeat neither you need to have hundreds of hours of reading it is called essence matter essence i always give example when you are drinking juice you are drinking essence you are not counting how many orange you bought and converted into juice do you agree or not it's essence matter sometime your three hours will be worth of three years so make sure you pay attention all questions are welcome but i will take questions in a 15 minute chunk so if you have a question, don't stop me. Because majority questions I'll answer and I'll take a pause. And then I'll explain and I'll take a pause. Then I'll explain and I'll, I'll take a pause. Make sense? Why? Because I'm sure some of the questions will be answered as I go further. If I will be answering, I'll say I can cover that later. But in case your questions are not answered during my slides or presentation, I'll stop and answer. Make sense? Tonight, your final exam, which is a mock exam, will take around nine 15 time it's a 30 questions should not take more than 20 minutes as you complete you just tell me how honestly you need to tell me uh what's your score and you're good to go so example if you complete in 10 minutes you're good to go those who are taking a little extra time you can after 30 minutes exam will automatically complete so maximum time you will be here till 9 45 sounds good again 10 plus minute extra stain would be worthwhile but if you can finish your exam sooner you're done Make sense? And you are most welcome to take this exam multiple times. So it's not like if you do tonight, tomorrow you cannot do. This is just a kind of measurement. How are we doing? Sounds good? Okay. So tonight I'm going to cover rear. So first R stands for role. E stands for event. And R stand, A stands for artifact. Artifacts is nothing but document or delivery. Events means nothing but meetings. And roles, nothing but who are players. Who are the players, right? Who are the scrum players? So there are three only. One, product owner. I'm going to cover in detail. Don't worry about it. Product owner, scrum master, and third is the dev team. So these are the three roles you always have in your scrum. Remember how many roles? Three. Don't come up with a fourth role. How many roles? Three. Product owner, scrum master, dev team. I will also cover who does what. Who does, does what. So that's what you, you if you know that part, almost in exam, ESM exam, almost 20 plus percentage questions you will answer without any doubt. Who does what? Who does what? Right? They all are independent role. No one reports to anyone. So it's not like Scrum Master report to product owner, team member reports to product owner. They are independent role. They are independent. Who hires them? Organization hires them. So organization hire them. When I say organization, it means management. We don't need to worry about who hires them because there won't be the question like that. But they are not reporting to each other. They are independent role. Together, we known as a, all three together, we are mentioning as a scrum team. Make sense? So if I say scrum team, I'm talking about three roles. But when I say dev team, I'm talking about developments. In that developer comes, QA comes, BA comes, everyone comes in the development team. But if I say product owner, then I'm specifically talking about one person, product owner. Who is product owner, how it works, we're gonna cover that. Scrum master is most like me, a coach. A teacher, a supporter, a guide. He's not a manager. He's a leader. Speak with me. Leader. leader. And there is a word I want you to know. Servant leader. Speak with me. Yeah. Servant leader. Yeah. Servant leader means I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve you. I don't have a title, but I'm going to make you a stronger, make you productive. I'm going to serve you. If I serve you well, you will give me respect. You will give me trust. Do you guys agree or not? Just like our parents. 
our parents never had a title, but they just serve you, right? Yes or no? And we have high respect with our parents, most of us, right? Because we kind of got the law of blessing and support from them, encouragement, inspiration. So that's the reason called servant leadership. So far, so good. Then we're going to talk about roles, right? Sorry, my mistake, rules. Rules means guidelines. Guideline. Guideline means coming from Scrum framework. Scrum framework. So this Scrum framework guidelines will tell you what to do, what not to do. What to do and what not to do. Make sense? So my goal tonight is if three hours we learn, after three hours, we're gonna take 30 minute squeeze. In the 30 minute squeeze, you will have 30 questions and this is a time box but I really want you to get minimum 60%. Minimum 60%. If you get 60%, then you need a one or two weeks to prepare for the final exam. If you get 90% right away, you will be done in one week. You will be prepared in one week. So if you are getting 90 or 89 or very close to 90, then if you seriously work one week, you will be done. So tonight I'll give you a recipe how to prepare for the certification also. My goal, hold your question for a while. My goal is making sure by January end, which is right now 18, 12 days you have, you get a certification. I humble request, take your career seriously. If you do not have certification, I'll be very honest with you. Getting a good job, getting a high paid job would be dream only. But with this certification, it will be reality. It will be reality. I'll be honest with you. I myself telling with experience. If you have Scrum, everything will be minor. If you know 50% QA, 50% BA, still you, you'll be welcome. Because Scrum is the foundation of success. If you already know Scrum, the rest of the thing, if you don't know 100%, people will still allow you. But if you do not know Scrum, and you know everything BA, everything QA, people will not allow you. Think about the game, Super Bowl. If you don't know the, any rules of the game and you are expert in a quarterback or XYZ, no one will hire you because you need to know the rules of the game. When you call touchdown, when you call penalty, when you call foul, when you get three points, when you get eight points, when you get one point, you need to understand that, right? The rules are very important. That's why Scrum is highly respected, highly required skill in the industry. Sounds good? So please hold your question. If you have a question, write it down because I'm gonna cover that in a few minutes. So now let's begin. I'm going through our slides. All slides contents are in a Google class. So whatever I'm teaching right now is last week PowerPoint, which is last week PowerPoint. It's all in Google class in case if you have, oh my God, I don't know where it is. It's in a PowerPoint, in a class work, relax and pay attention, okay? So first thing is the role. So how many roles we have? One is the product owner, second is the scrum master, and third is the development team. Are we clear? So scrum product owner is the one also known as a PO. Scrum master is also known as SM, and development team is known as a dev. Together we call scrum team. Now product owner has three roles, main three roles. First role is product vision. Speak with me, product vision. So product vision comes from product owner. Second thing is product roadmap. Product roadmap. Product roadmap means like what will be delivered in first three months, what will be delivered in next month, like that, right? Last week we talked about, but in case if you don't know, it's just like a show you three months, four months, six months, what are you coming? It's like going to roadmap. So think about you're driving from here to New York, it's a road and there's a map like every three months, sorry, three hours, you can see where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Your destination is, your destination is New York. So that's your reason. Where am I going? New York. That's my reason. But I want to have a checkpoint every two hours, every three hours. Where am I? Where am I on track? Am I behind? So product reason means destination, ultimate goal. And product roadmap is kind of incremental goal, incremental goal towards the destination. Now, without roadmap, you will not be able to reach to the destination. Do you guys agree or not? If I want to go to New York 
And if I don't know how, I cannot go there. Yes or no? So how part is de defined in a roadmap? But where am I going? That visibility is defined in a vision. Product vision is very important because it gives you inspiration. But product roadmap is also very important because it gives you clarity. It gives you clarity. Who creates product roadmap? Product owner. Who created product vision? Product owner. Third thing. Product owner manage product backlog. Product backlog. So product backlog is managed, managed or administered, managed or administered by product owner. Now you say, ho, 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 wait a minute, how product backlog came? So product backlog came from the product roadmap. So whatever you put here is kind of detailed informations are coming from here. So when product owner is creating roadmap, that roadmap details are added into product backlog. So product backlog normally starts very early stage. So example, I'm going for New York with my family. So my family is going to have a wish list. I'm going to go to Times Square. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yes or no? Before even I start, there is expectation. Yes or no? And that expectation is going to go into product backlog. So I will have a laundry list of product backlog. Do you guys agree? Before even I start taking one step towards destination. I already have expectation from my customers, which we call stakeholders. Stakeholders, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. Now, every stakeholder, when I say stakeholder, means business, business members say, I want this, I want this, I want this. Let's say company is big, business owners will, sorry, business members will be more. They might ask a lot more details. So product backlog will be very, very big. Question in the exam, is product backlog Whatever the item you have in a product backlog, do you need to do all? Answer is no. Listen carefully. If product backlog has hundreds of items, if product backlog has hundreds of items, do you need to deliver all hundreds of items? Answer is no. Why? Because when you start the journey, you will have time is essence. And dollar, which is the cost, is the essence. Time and cost. Time and cost. And importance is called value. So time cost and value decide what to do and what not to do example if i have five days vacation plan and there are 20 attraction to you know see and i realize that it's going to take me two weeks to complete that i might decide which one i should watch or see in five days versus stay there for more than two weeks make sense so who will prioritize the product backlog product owner product owner will prioritize and say we'll do this We'll do this, we'll do this. So product backlog prioritization, who does that? Product owner. Product owner continuously prioritize that because he thinks if I do this thing now, customer will get value. He will continuously prioritize that. There is no specific day, there is no specific time. And when he prioritizes that, refinements, product backlog refinements. There will be a question in the exam. What is PBR? Product backlog refinement. Product backlog refinement means clarify, clarify, clarify. Reprioritize, prioritize, reprioritize. Continuously refine. Why? Because when you refine it, you know what to do now, what to do later, what needs more detail, what can be split it, what can be divided into multiple sections. Make sense or no? So he will continuously do that. Who does? Product backlog, sorry, product owner. Now, if I go up on a product backlog, clarity will be high. Speak with me, clarity will be high. Clarity will be high means if I read, I will understand. But if I go to downside of the product backlog, it will not be clear, it will be vague. Example, if you ask me, what am I going to do tomorrow? I'll be crystal clear. But if you ask me, what am I going to do in next 10 years? I will not know. Do you agree or not? So as you are closer or top in the product backlog, priority is high, clarity is high. Speak with me. Priority is high, clarity is high. But if we go down, priority is low, clarity is low. Clear? Now product backlog continuously refined. So that is called emerging. Speak with me. Emerging. What do you call? Emerging. Emerging means it's continuously revising. Continuously. If you see one hour before, after one hour, things will be changed. 
That's called living and breathing document. It's a living and breathing document. You cannot argue. Oh, I saw in the morning this thing. Now suddenly change. No, it is a purpose of that. So that's why it's a detail emerging, explain. It's continuously going through the this model. Good news, product owner manage that. Any so far? So far, so good. Am I doing good so far? Product owner, product vision, product roadmap. Product backlog and prioritizes. Good. Now, this is the first artifact. Remember this one. This is the first artifact, which is called product backlog. This is the artifact, product backlog. Product backlog is nothing but laundry list. It's a laundry list. For one product, only one product backlog. For one product backlog, about uh, we call vision, it's a long term. Product vision is a long term, right? And then we talk about roadmap, which is nothing but three months time frame. So when you say three month time frame, it's a roadmap. So roadmap is three month time frame. But if you divide the roadmap into small, small, small slice, and that is called sprint. Equal slice, equal slice. Normally sprints are fixed time block, but we can say two weeks sprint. What is sprint means? It's a fixed time block. That sprint normally development teams come in picture so whenever i say sprint think about two weeks time block how many weeks two weeks time block now in that two weeks what development team gonna work that will be decided by product owner so product owner will decide what work what work development team will work and that work is known as a sprint backlog so sprint backlog is another artifact Product backlog is another artifact. Product backlog is managed. Who manage the sprint backlog? Development team. Now you say, but I'm not understanding what is sprint backlog. So let's let me answer that. So think about that. A company, a product owner has three months plan. How many months plan? I'm going to give you two weeks plan. I say what to do, and then sprint backlog will have two weeks plan. Only two weeks. So, who manages the sprint backlog? Development team. But they cannot just do it. So, there is a partnership between product owner and development team. So, the partnership is having a two stage approach. Carefully, product owner will say what to do what to do in this sprint and development team will say how to do it speak this happens in a meeting so this is the first meeting and that meeting is called sprint planning that's the first meeting which is called sprint planning sprint plan is the first meeting sprint sprint should not confuse you Listen carefully, just like you call week. As soon as I say week, what comes in mind? Five days, yes or no? And if I say two weeks, what it comes in mind? 10 days, same thing. When I say sprint, think about a couple of weeks, right? It can be one week or it can be four weeks. It can be one week. Now because you're gonna slice, you're gonna slice your release into that form. So if I have week, one week, then I'll slice this thing in a one week. If it is two weeks, I'll slice into two weeks. But once I slice into two weeks, I remain in a two weeks block. So far, so good. So spring means fixed time block. Now, in that spring, the first meeting you're gonna do is a sprint plan. So in sprint planning, product owners say, I want this, I want this, and then development team say, okay, how we will do that part? And that will be coming to sprint backlog. So sprint backlog has product owner prioritization and development team implementation approach. Make sense? Example, product owner say, I want login page. Product owner say, I want login page. So that is what product owner will say, I need login page. Then development team say, oh, so you need HTML which is called web content. You need a, some kind of program, which is called JavaScript. You need a database. 
you need a programming, you need a QA test cases, you need a document. So this is the work. The work part will come from development team. The business part, I need logging. The business part will come from product owner. So what I need logging, but how logging will work will come from development team. This discussion will happen in sprint planning. Sprint planning will have two meetings. Sprint planning will have two meetings. First meeting, product owner will say what he wants. What he Is it gone? Eight hours. This meeting will be eight hours. So if I do the meeting, sprint planning meeting will be eight hours. And there are two sections. First section is what? In what product owner, product owner talks to development team. In a what? Product owner talks to development team. The second section, how? How means development team will educate product owner how they're going to do it. This meeting is normally eight hours meeting. But that's for one month sprint. One month sprint. But let's say if you don't have one month and you have two weeks sprint, then this meeting will be four hours. Make sense? So this is the rules. You cannot take more than that. So far, so good. Sprint planning is the always first meeting between product owner, development team, and Scrum Master will be there. Scrum Master will see that product owner is not pressurizing team to do more. And development team should not you know, create a challenge for product owner. So Scrum Master will be there to make sure everyone do right thing and the meeting is properly conducted. So if I ask question, who attends sprint planning? Who attends sprint planning? Scrum team. Everyone. Product owner, scrum master, and development team. Who attends the scrum team? Product owner, scrum master, and development team. Make sure everyone pay attention. There will be a question. If product owner does not know how to answer, if product owner does not know how to answer the development team, then product owner can bring subject matter expert subject matter expert in this meeting if product owner does not know how to answer the questions a product owner doesn't know what to do in that case product owner will bring subject matter expert in the meeting who decides product owner because he knows that i cannot answer this question so he will bring subject matter expert in the meeting are we clear? So sometimes subject matter expert can also attend the meeting. But whose call is this? Product owner. Can development team brings? No. Product owner. Now I mentioned very simple word. Who attends? Who attends? Who attends the sprint plan? So attention, attends, attend is different than participation. So like example, you all are attending the class, but some of you are participating. Means you're questioning, your eyeballs, your eyeballs goes up and down, and some of you are just sitting and thinking completely different words. That's called attending, but not participating. And some of you are like that, you are doing injustice to you. Make sense? So in sprint planning, if you are sitting and you are not participating, who is going to disturb you? Scrum master. They will say, come on. Come in reality. Come in reality. Start participating. You are not just sitting here. You have to actively participate. So Scrum Master will be continuously coaching you. Make sense? Are we clear with sprint planning first? Now, um, can you... I ask a question, please? Uh -huh. Go ahead. All right. So um, I know the product owner is the one responsible to prioritize the product backlog, uh, backlog mm -hmm. but are there situations whereby? They have a priority on their product backlog, and the developers are saying that they can achieve it in that um, sprint. Mm -hmm. So, what's the question? So, are there situations where the developers are telling the product um, owners that they cannot achieve that priority for that oh. sprint? What happens here. So, negotiation happens here. So when you are in sprint planning, negotiation happens. Negotiation happens because something 
product owner is asking, development team cannot do it. Maybe something is pending. Maybe something is too hard. Maybe something is first time we are doing. So that negotiation will happen during sprint planning. But prioritization only comes from product owner. So example, if I ask five items, but three items development team say, yeah, we can do, but two items we cannot do. Why? Because server is not ready. Maybe development team is not ready. Maybe certain thing is not ready. Then development team say, yeah, I want you. I know you want, but these are the reason we cannot do it. Then that negotiation will happen in sprint planning. But that will development team and product owner will discuss about. Okay, so basically my question. Question, straight question. All right, so the Scrum Master, what he only coaches me, he's not like doing anything technical. Scrum Master, if, let me make it very simple. And I don't want this question to be again asked. Scrum Master does not do anything. Let me repeat. Scrum Master does not do anything. Second thing, Scrum Master does not decide anything. Her, Scrum Master is a coach, mentor, guru, teacher, whatever you call, leader, servant leader. So guru, teacher, coach, servant leader, teacher, he is there to teach. Why? Because it is, it is proven that I may not be able to see everyone, but if I have someone who is helping me, that guy will see your screen and say, shut it off, focus. And that is custom master. I need somebody in that to make sure he keep eyes on everyone's laptop, make sure he remove everyone's phone. So no one should be doing texting. No one should be doing any additional activity because when you do the work, 100%. Teacher, coach, and sometimes I will show you video also. Sometimes he's gonna punish you also. He will say, "Come on, why are you coming late every day?" He may ask you this question. So, he, because he's a teacher, he's a leader, he's a parent. Yes. They also like uh, do like meetings. They set up meetings and like email. Email. I, I'm coming to oh. that. But he does not do the work. Are we clear? Now there is there will be a question about Scrum Master, let me answer this then. Is Scrum Master is a full-time role? Answer is no. Scrum Master is a part-time role. What is part-time means? Scrum Master is not busy for his role, so it's a part-time role. So can Scrum Master do coding? Answer is yes. So if you are QA or BA, and if you play Scrum Master role, you're doing two jobs, yes or no? You're most preferred, and that is the reason I'm telling you, get the certification. The Scrum Master itself, if you directly apply for Scrum Master, I can tell you, most company will not hire you. Why? Because it is not a full-time role. It is a part-time role. However, Scrum Master can do coding. Scrum Master can do other activity as long as time permits. Now, Scrum Master goal is to make sure meeting happens on time. First, meeting happens on time. Second, meeting actively people participate. People follow the Scrum guides and they do the necessary things according to the Scrum guide. So he's going to make sure meeting organization, who attends, who does Scrum Master. He organized the meetings. He facilitates the meetings. He observes the meetings. He makes sure other people are participating, but he doesn't make any decisions. He doesn't make any decisions. So like example, Ahad. Ahad is not doing right thing. Then he will say, Ahad, what's going on? How can I help you? Now I say, you know what? My, my car has a problem. So he might help you, guide you, so you can fix the car problem. But he will expect Ahad to come 8 o'clock sharply. Okay. He will expect everyone to come 8 o'clock sharply. If people are not following the guidelines, Scrum guideline, Scrum Master will be the first person who will be coaching you, teaching you. Make sense? And if you consistently doing uh, wrong, then he might punish you also. So um, if you, let's say, if you're applying for a role as a BA or a QA, mm -hmm. and you have to 
But if you had to pick a specific candidate, do you know, based on Scrum, you would be more preferable than other candidates? I thought that's what I'm I mean, saying. That's, that's what you're basically saying. Mm -hmm. I did not do this for myself. Okay. So far, so good. Yes. So if he's the coach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He, do, he doesn't report to no one reports to, to no one. Okay. They are all three so, yeah. independent. So who supervised him? No one supervised. No one supervised to anyone. Good question, first of all. This team, listen carefully, and I want to make sure because in our in our team also, it's gonna happen this problem. See, when you are doing homework, does anyone ask you at home to do homework? Ask yourself question in your house. Did anyone say, did you do homework? No, but you still do it. Yes or no? 60 to 70 percent student does homework. The reason it's called self motive, self motive, self discipline, self motive, self discipline. So they all are very highly motivated. They are there to make a difference. They are there to win the game. They are here for a reason. So no external motivation is required. No external supervision is required. They are going to do their part best, but they are not reporting to each other. They are having a fun to do more and better. Make sense? So Scrum Master, development team, or product owner, they don't have any supervision. They are there. They know that my purpose is to make the product better. Their goal is to make sure we win in the market by doing the good product. So they have fun and when they have fun, they self-respect each other. So they respect product owner, product owner respect development team, development team respect scrum master. They know each other that together we are perfect. Let's not have any authority. Scrum master is a servant leader. No decisions, no power, no control, nothing. It's just influencing. And the best way to influence is how many of you say Mother Teresa has the best power in the world? Tell me. How many of you say that Martin Luther King has the best power in the world? That's the influencing power. They saw so many people, the hundreds of people, millions of people respect them. And they saw them. It's not power, not decision, not fire, not hire. It's just serving. Make sense? Any other questions? Question, please. I'm like, um, I'm sure there are situations whereby we have an uncooperative team member that probably the scrum master have tried to reach out and coach and guide the member, but he or she is not being cooperative. Does he have the power or privilege to report to like HR or the manager or the, you know, I don't know. Does he have the no. power to do that, to report so to such member? You, could you make it easy? If anywhere you see power, that's the wrong answer. Make it easy. I think you guys are already going in the wrong direction. So I want to make sure you come out. I don't want to go in a rabbit hole because the way you are asking question is all old mindset. New mindset is if team is highly motivated, you do not need to control them. Please understand. You don't control them. You inspire them. The day you control, the team will not grow. If you control your kids, do this, do this, do this, do this, they will never grow. Your, your goal is to get try, learn, pain, and learn and try. That's the scrum master. If somebody is coming late, scrum master will ask question, how can I help? Is there a way I can help you better? But that decision development team needs to make. Should we change the time? Should we do that? Scrum master does not make any decisions. Am I making clear? See, your role is to empower, inspire them. Don't make any decisions. Why? Because if you make decision, then what the team is going to learn? If every decision Scrum Master makes, then team will never learn. Do you agree or not? The goal of the Agile Scrum is iterative and incremental. If I'm doing this thing, I will make mistakes. And when I make mistakes, when I do it, I learn it. And I learn it, I get better. So each and every one, all development related decision, development team makes. Development related decision, development team makes. Product related decision, product owner makes. Zero decisions, Scrum Master makes. Am I clear? Zero decisions. Let me repeat. 
zero decisions. Scrum master is not a manager. Remove the word from your dictionary. Scrum master is not a manager, it's a leader. And a leader does not control, leader inspire. Yes, Rachel. Rachel, question? Yes, can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yes. Oh, okay, so I think that what is on everyone's mind is we're all trying to figure out what justifies the Scrum Master's high pay if most of the job is being done by the product owner and the development team. Very nice. So ask yourself question. If I'm teaching the class, will I be highly paid or not? Say yes or no. Ask yourself question. If you if I teach this class to 10,000 employees, will I make more money or not? Yes, you will. If 10 people are there, if they produce one item, but with my present, if they produce 10 items, will I be highly paid or not? Of course, coach. Coach are paid highly because they make winner. Listen carefully. Coach are highly paid because they make winner. If you are a good leader, you will produce your team better. If you are good parents, your kids will be better. Do you agree or not? Kids are better because of parents' effort. It's not just a kid's effort. Parents know how to guide, guide by side, influence, providing support, providing environment, providing encouragement, and that's the reason. So let's remove the, you will see quite different. I've seen my own kids, when they go to the, in the stadium or in the school and they play music, it's all noise, because everyone is playing randomly. But when orchestrator comes and man, he does this like movement of simple hand with a simple stick, amazing. I would love to listen that music. That music is produced by Scrum Master. Now ask yourself a question, if the player is paid more or the orchestrator is paid more? Of course, orchestrator is paid more. And the music you have to create. And music only you can create, you have played that role. That's the reason it's not easy to get a scrum master unless you have played that leadership role. So if you have to be a good teacher, you have to be a good leader, you have to prove yourself. That's why I'm always telling you, do not target scrum master's job. You need to build a combination. BA plus Scrum Master, QA plus Scrum Master, developer plus Scrum Master, so you can have winning aspects. Make sense? Any other questions? Just one question. Uh, so uh, does he do like a co like coaching one on one or? Yes, both. Like he can to teach, teach coach in a group, or he can do one on one. So Scrum Master teach three groups. So Scrum Master will teach first management. So management he teach. Second he teach customer. And then third, he teaches the development team. So Scrum Master is continuously teaching, inspiring, coaching. Because he knows if I don't coach, people will not learn. Think about that those who are having kids, if they are going basketball or maybe any, any sports. Think about the coach, how much effort coach put. Do you guys agree or not? Man, I have kids and I've been there. No matter how cold or no matter how snow or how many rainy days, coach is always there before I go there, yes or no? And that guy leaves after everyone leaves. So Scrum Master is always coaching, coach parents, coach kids, coach other people also. If somebody is making noise outside, Scrum Master will say, hey guys, don't make noise, my kids are playing the game. And he will try to remove all obstacles. So your team get the best time to perform, right? So Scrum Master is amazing role. Trust me, that's why I can tell you, most successful people as a scrum master role is ladies. Ladies, let me repeat. Ladies or women are very successful in scrum master role. Why? Because you are emotional. Listen carefully. You are emotional. So ladies are emotional because they feel first before they make decisions. So scrum master, the candidate, candidacy, when you two candidate apply, natural tendency to hire women because they are very soft. When they talk, they feel first before they make decisions. The men are more judgmental. They make decisions, then they feel. So Scrum Master role is not just make decisions. Scrum Master goal is to take people to make decisions. They don't make decisions. They take people to that level where they didn't make decisions. Make sense? Any other questions? Am I making clear, clear here so far? Um, so about the sprint backlog that happened because of um, 
after after this a sprint running, the sprint back off happened and the product more on the sides. What is for the strategy? I think we discussed about that, right? Let's yeah. talk your question, not repeat what you have. So to ask question if you have. Right? We want to we want to make sure we go forward rather than backward. Okay, so now we talk about Scrum Master. Now development team. Development teams are doer. Listen carefully. They are doer. Now product owner is a visionary. He think about vision. He thinks about product. So product related decisions product owner makes. Development related development related decision what to do, how to do, what process to follow, who is going to do, when they're going to do. That is development team. But scrum scrum related guideline is coming from scrum master. So out of out of three, who is the most scrum related knowledgeable person? Scrum master. So scrum master needs to know very well rear. What is R stands for? Roles. What is E stands for? Events. Events. What is A stands for? R stands. R stands for rules. So this rules is Scrum master is continuously making sure people follow it. People follow it. So he's not going to fire, neither he's going to hire. He's going to guide them. So example, I'm going to go through next slide. So it will help you. I'll come back to this slide. I'll come back. Okay, don't worry about it. Get you here. Yeah, this one. So please pay attention. Right now, I'm on, my goal is to make sure you understand Scrum framework. So Scrum is a framework speak with me framework scrum is not a methodology it's a framework so framework means just like a house think about house house will have a frame do you guys agree or not you will have wall right then you will have roof and then you have the you know flooring do you guys agree or not so that's a frame and then on the frame you can create whatever you want same thing scrum is a framework where you can change something you can add something you can remove something but still majority framework is still same now, this diagram is very important, so you will understand some of the things. So, whenever I say sprint, I'm talking about two weeks. So this is a sprint, and in sprint is nothing but sprint is nothing but fixed time block. Sprint is a fixed time block. The first day you do sprint planning. Speak with me. Sprint planning. Sprint planning will have two meeting. What and how. What and how. Who focus on what? Product owner who focus on how development team. Then every day there will be a daily standard, which is a second meeting. First meeting is sprint planning. Daily meetings are always 15 minutes or less. 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, all the way till the last day. So this 15 minute daily standard, there will be a question, a lot more questions. Listen carefully. In three minutes, you will know everything. Daily stand-up is 15 minutes. It always starts on time. Who organized daily stand-up? Scrum master. Who organized? Scrum master. Who attends? Product owner, development team, and scrum master. Who attends? Product owner, development team, and scrum master. Who participate? Development team. Listen carefully. Who attends? Attends mean all three: product owner, scrum master, development team. But who participate? Only development team, because that daily standard. It is not a status meeting for manager. Listen carefully. It is not a status meeting. It is not a status. Communication. So everyone knows what to do today. If there is a problem, who and how should we resolve? Who made the decision? Development team. Scrum master role is very simple. Meeting starts on time. Meeting ends on time. Everyone should participate. Development team perspective. If someone says, I'm going to talk more. If someone is taking more time, scrum master says, oh, come on. You know that daily standard. In two minutes, you have to complete the work. So Scrum Master role is to make sure everyone has an opportunity to speak and they will remain clear and concise. Then just like Ahad was started talking, right? I stop it. Did you notice that? Even though he wanted to rewind the tap, I said, no, 
Scrum Master will do that same thing. Hey guys, don't start with pee, poo, breakfast, lunch, bed. You don't have to say, tell the critical item. Because you, everyone has to be clear, concise. Because if time is limited, you will be very clear and concise. I like uh, John, uh, sorry, Brian Tracy, motivational speaker, say that. Think about that you have only six minutes to live. Six minutes to live. What would you do? The most six minutes, you have six minutes left. Like example, when World Trade Center hit and then other plane hit, right? That time, everyone had a six minute. In that six minutes, what would you do? You will do the most important thing in the in the life, yes or no? So that same thing in daily stand, daily stand up, everyone has two minutes. And in two minutes, you need to communicate. So you will talk about the critical thing. So you will say three form. What did I do yesterday? What did I do yesterday? What am I doing today? And is there any roadblock? So let me repeat. So yesterday, I was preparing for the Agile Scrum class. Today, I kind of defined the strategy. How am I going to conduct the class? I do not have any roadblock. How long it took? Less than a minute. Do you agree? So now let's say Mansi comes. Mansi, tell me, what did you do yesterday? What you are going to do today? And is there any roadblock? Yesterday I was watching the video. Mm -hmm. Today I worked on my homework after mm -hmm. watching the video. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have any. See, less than a minute. So in in case, let's say someone say, you know what? Yesterday, today I woke up um, eight o'clock. And then I did brush, then I took a bath, then I took a bread, then I ate and then tea. Scrum Master will stop you. Because here we are not talking about laundry list. If you want to talk some risk item, some issue item, after daily standard, you huddle. Huddle means you start talking to the respective team member after 15 minutes. Only respective people will talk. And then that update you will provide to the rest of the team next day. Daily stand up only starts on eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever team agrees upon. But they're gonna they are not gonna change the time. Daily stand up doesn't need the morning, though it is preferred. But if people are traveling by train or commuting by train and if they think 10 o'clock they can be in office, then 10 o'clock they can start daily stand up. If people say no, 10 30 would be better, then they will start at 10 30. But when they agree, they start 10 30 every day. Daily stand up doesn't need to be daily, sorry, stand up. Means doesn't everyone doesn't have to stand up. Daily stand up, ideally good if you are in person. But if you are remote, it's still fine if you use conference, conference call or something. Daily scrum also work if you're virtual too. But it's always 15 minutes. Development team. Who participate? Development team. Scrum master there to make sure meeting staff meeting ends scrum master make sure everyone participates if there is a risk item someone wants to communicate they will say hey guys this is the way it's done hey yesterday i was doing web development today i'm going to do database and i do not know how to create er diagram so i would need help after daily stand up i need someone's help very simple or uh, someone say hey yesterday i write yesterday i was Can't hear you anymore. So think about the Super Bowl. So in Super Bowl, in Super Bowl, what you do? We, we, we did not hear like the last one or two minutes because you were you were breaking cut off. Like yeah, I'll repeat. I'll repeat. So some reason internet is like a flag here. Let me do one thing. I cable maybe. Okay, now it might be better because it's a LAN connection. Now it will be better. Is it better now? Yes, thank you, Tufa. Yeah. yeah, so I'm repeating. So Scrum Master will make sure that whenever you start the meeting, if someone wants to hijack the meeting, Scrum Master will stop. Scrum Master will also make sure everyone actively participates. 
if someone has if someone continuously missing the meeting listen carefully if someone is continuously missing the meeting then scrum master may ask is everything okay and help team to decide what to do if team member continues listen carefully if team member continuously missing all meetings then team member will decide that we don't need this team member who decides team not product owner not scrum master so ultimately execution part it is the development team responsibility execution part are we understand scrum master role is to just make sure everything happens so let's go back to this diagram we'll do one more time first is this meeting sprint planning eight hours for one month and two weeks what's the timeline four hours clear the set, second meeting daily scrum what is the timeline 15 minutes that happens almost every day do you agree and the last day your sprint review and demo sometimes they call sprint demo so this is the meeting number three and this is the meeting number four there will be a question they will ask you to order the meeting sorry any problem one question please yeah well, so, give, me, uh, give, me two, give me two minutes let me complete this and then i'll answer your question just hold for a few minutes so first thing they will ask in a, in, a, in exam the order of the meeting so first meeting will be sprint planning the second meeting will be daily scrum the third meeting will be sprint demo sprint demo right or review and the fourth meeting will be sprint retrospective sprint retrospective sprint retrospective now I'll, let me explain this because i will be in the middle some of the question might be answered and then i'll answer all of your question sprint planning we talk about eight hours for one month or for you know sprint two weeks we have four hours daily scrum we talk about 15 minutes now sprint demo so when you development team when they start please pay attention don't miss any of this so when development team start they start with the sprint backlog right yes or no and sprint backlog will have stories will have stories now you can say what is the story i never heard about it so story think about that what business want at this moment just think about what business want so what business want is a story and story normally will have a value story normally will have value because business want so business say if you do it i will get value value means benefit so every story will have value and that value is high will do first and value is low will do later so far so good so every story will have value do you agree or not and who comes with the story business who prioritize product owner now when story comes here the story will be broken down into tasks that is happening here so story will be broken down into task in a how part so there will be a question what comes out listen carefully what comes out from a sprint plan two things comes out one sprint backlog one sprint backlog and second sprint goal speak with me sprint goal so when you complete the sprint planning what comes out sprint backlog backlog means stories and task stories and task stories means i want login story means i want login and task means for login you need a html you need a qa you need this thing that thing to that task another thing is i want shopping cart then there will be a task for shopping cart i need this so story means business one and task means developer needs to do what developer needs to do that those are tasks that's the sprint backlog and sprint goal means if i fast forward and if i go to last what would i like to complete or accomplish or show so goal is a little bit two weeks goal just like a vision goal is just like a vision but it's two weeks vision if i fast forward what i would like to see after two weeks so when you do sprint planning two things comes up sprint backlog and sprint goal speak with me sprint backlog and sprint goal so far so good now when you do sprint review or demo i will go with the demo first 
in demo whatever team has completed like example story one completed example story two completed example story three completed example story four completed so in a demo listen carefully product owner will invite product owner will invite listen carefully product owner will invite business community product owner will invite business community in spring demo product owner will invite business community and development team will be there because they are the one who is going to demo and scrum master will be there so they may ask question who set up spring demo product owner actually set up the spring demo he will invite marketing people hr people he might be having or what he calls c executive or any other groups he will customers also he will invite and he will show listen carefully he will show the completed story completed story if this is not completed he will not show he will only show completed story so example if we start with five stories how many story five story and let's say we complete three how many he's going to show three now when he start he will start about hey guys this is what we started but this is what we completed and then he will ask development team to start their laptop and show the working product working product because product owner is a business person so he's gonna say hey, we started with login we started with shopping cart we started with create profile we started with email template but we were able to complete login we were able to complete shopping cart so development team is going to show so he's going to set the stage and development team will start showing the reason he's showing that so customers uh, management marketing c executive can see what they are doing and get feedback so this demo will help you to get the feedback product feedback spin demo will help you to get the product feedback and those product feedback will help product owner to go and prioritize product backlog so product backlog will be prioritized by product owner after this meeting again because somebody give you feedback product when product owner say oh wow you need this thing early he will prioritize oh you want me to change he will prioritize so during spring demo during spring demo you will get a lot of feedback you can get a lot of feedback all those feedback development team will pass to product owner it's a product owner responsibility to act or reject the feedback who will act or reject product owner development team cannot make any comments or concerns development say thank you for your feedback even it's good or bad development team just gonna say thank you for your feedback let me pass your feedback to the product owner product owner is going to take that feedback and then reprioritize the product back so far so good any questions so far now please ask Spring demo will always take place after sprint review. Right? Spring, no, no, spring demo is a sprint. There is no meeting called sprint review. Spring demo and sprint review is one. They are same. They are not different. So the product owner does not participate in the daily meeting. Product owner does not participate. That's the good question. So listen carefully. In daily scrum, attendance means attend. Anybody can attend. Technically speaking, product owner always attends. Because if there is a question, he can help. But participation only done by development team. He's listening. He's listening. Can other people can participate? No. Can other people attend the daily scrum? Answer is yes. If someone wants to know what's going on, they can attend, but they cannot participate. Participate means speaking or answering, but they can listen. Anybody want to listen? Anyone want to see? They can attend, but they cannot participate. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Last meeting. So meeting number. See, first we talk about meeting one, sprint planning, clear, what and how. We talk about meeting two, daily scrum. Meeting three, this is the same. Sprint re review and demo is the same meeting. It's a one meeting, demo. The last meeting is a retrospective. So let's understand. Sprint demo, who organized? Product owner. And invited? Marketing people, sales people, C executive, everyone will be invited. And development team will be there as well. Scrum master will be there. Now, in a in a retrospective, listen carefully. In a retrospective, scrum master, 
product owner and development team part they attend product owner development team and scrum master they all attend and then think about how did we do this two weeks did we do all right or do we have improvement opportunity or how they do it yes how did they do right so they will ask overall how did we do so now one person saying oh, what we started with the five items but we deliver only three items it means we took more than we deliver so next time maybe we should start with three items and deliver all three items somebody say you know what when we estimated the work we did wrong we did not do good estimation maybe we should improve in estimation someone say you know what whenever we are making some work we did not show this work to our product owner we should actually get feedback early and often fail fast speak with me fail fast we complete the work here for story one we should have shown to the customer which is our product owner we should show the product owner we did not show so we got feedback very late in the game our goal should be as soon as we complete the work we should get the feedback so if i complete the story here we should show to the product owner and get the feedback if there is a tweak required we could have done it why because if product owner have provided feedback then we could have made the changes here so when we go in demo our product would look good so everyone will be honestly providing they will say what should we start what should we stop and what should we change again what should we start what should we change and what should i stop just like i always tell people if you don't stop something it's going to bite you so example some of you are working just an example some of you are working and it is taking you 8 hours and then after coming home maybe you are watching tv maybe 4 hours maybe fish facebook for 2 hours right so 8 hours 4 hours and talk. so total you spend 14 hours now you can say i don't have time to do homework very simple you are very right you are very right but if that theory if you use then technically you will never do homework in that case you will never get a job there is no need to discuss about it so you need to stop something your two choice work facebook or tv if you don't stop something then you have a problem so now you say let's say i was going to stop tv or maybe reduce instead of 4 hours to 3 hours now you stop then the question is what should i start so you say i will do one hour homework every day now you start it make sense or not so what to start what to stop what to change change means example you might be doing facebook it's okay to do facebook nothing wrong in that but maybe you can in facebook maybe you can say instead of facebook maybe i can do youtube so i can read about that i can learn about it i can still have fun that there are so many shorts videos are there but i can also watch and i can learn right people are say i'm driving you can listen you can still listen some like you know thing so you have to change something so this team member continuously every sprint they will go to retrospective retrospective means see overall how did they do is there any improvement they can do and then we'll decide one thing one thing they're going to take to the next sprint one thing that will help them to improve the process improve the process so sprint review sorry retrospective retrospective is for process improvement sprint demo or review is for product improvement so listen carefully if they ask in the exam which meeting is most important for product improvement the sprint demo slash review if they ask in exam which meeting is most important for process improvement answer is retrospective most company when they cancel the retrospective they cancel the opportunity of improvement so i will never cancel the retrospective why because retrospective will give you opportunity to learn from the past and change the future if you cannot learn you will not improve so in agile we follow mantra called iterative and incremental so every two weeks we going to do sprint yes or no so every two weeks we are iterating but incremental means we are improving make sense and for improvement retrospective is very important make sense question so far people on phone any questions just to clarify you said sprint um, demo or review is for product improvement right yes sprint demo or review is product improvement yes and sprint retrospective is process improvement mm -hmm. any other questions my question is i'm saying 
Now I'm seeing the product, the screen master coming at the end in the uh, participating in the sprint review, pro, uh, re, sprint re, pro, retrospective. Uh, <clears throat> at what point does he join? Because I saw a promo uh, sprint planning, it's done by PO and the development team. How is he joining the team uh, toward till the end? Sorry, question. I'm not understanding question. What's the question? My question is, uh, as you explained the process, okay. I'm seeing in this process uh, from uh, the uh, at sprint at sprint sprint planning. Mm -hmm. It is done by product owner and the development team. Mm -hmm. Then at the end, I, at the sprint uh, retrospective, I'm seeing that's when the scrim master comes in. No, My, no, no, everywhere, everywhere, scrum master is there. Remember these meetings. These meetings are are advice start and end scrum master is always there okay. so here scrum master is there what to start when to end are we even participating product owner is not pressurizing development team is doing right job everywhere scrum master is there it's not like disappearing he's okay. there he is the one who is making sure meeting start and meeting ends on time meeting starts and meeting ends on time scrum master is always there okay. and if somebody has a question with respect to agile he's going to educate them right but he is not the one talker. He is not participating. He is there. He is attending. He is not actively participating. Main role is product owner and development team. The show executed by development team. But supervision, adult supervision, adult supervision is done by Scrum Master. But Scrum Master is everywhere. He is there all the time. He is not going to sit tight and remove. He is not doer. He's a leader and leader normally talk five minutes, 10 minutes, but rest of the people are going to do eight hours work. So that's why Scrum Master is a part-time role, not a full-time role. Good question. Any other questions? Um, so after the sprint demo, it starts over again. So once sprint, sprint, no, after retrospective. Yeah, after retrospective. So once retrospective completes, you will have a new, new Scrum. Make sense? So new sprint, sprints will start. Yes, Rachel. So how long does the sprint review and sprint retrospective take? Very good, very good. I'm going to show you that. So first of all, let me key item I want to repeat before I answer to your questions, Rachel. First of all, meeting number one, are we clear? Sprint planning, what and how? Are we clear meeting number two, daily scrum? Are we clear meeting number three? And are we clear meeting number four? So they will ask, yes. meeting, they will ask retrospective. Retrospective should be the last meeting of the sprint. And then after new sprint will start. So new sprint starts, then first meeting will be again sprint planning. Make sense? Okay. Now to answer two questions about what time and all. So this is the answer. So sprint planning for one month, eight hours. For two weeks, it is four hours. And same apply for here. This is always 15 minutes. For sprint review, for one month, listen carefully, for one month, four hours, for two weeks, two hours. For sprint retrospective, for one month, three hours, and for two weeks, one and a half hours. And you can see who attends, right? And you can see this is the development team and all key stakeholders. So this is the key stakeholder. Now Scrum Master optional, optional, product owner is optional, for development team because daily scrum is for development team it is not a status meeting scrum master product owner and development team. so who attends is here and then time is here order is here remember order is very important clear yes what's the most common sprint planning is it like a one month or two weeks two weeks 90 plus percent company use sprint planning sorry a scrum which is called sprint here two weeks 90 plus percent. So if someone asking in interview, just say two weeks, right? You don't do much because if you have a choice, one week, two week, three week, and four week, which one would you use? Then you will choose one week. Shorter is better. Why? Because you give customer faster delivery. Faster delivery. Now, when you come to spring planning, product backlog is already there. Yes or no? And from product backlog, you're going to get story. Who going to decide the story? Product owner. Yes or no? And when you come out from sprint planning, you get another document which is called sprint backlog. 
and another thing you get is a sprint goal yes or no so first first document you got is the product backlog are we clear first document is the product backlog the second document is a sprint backlog the third document is when you do review that time your increment speak with me increment increment means working product but it's increment and then overall overall how we are doing that there is a graph graph prepared by scrum master this is very important the graph prepared by scrum master which is called burn burn down burn down or burn up burn down or burn up i'll explain in a few minutes but this is what scrum master does normally so actually it's automatically created but scrum master normally follow focus on this aspect because it gives it gives them weather report it gives me weather report now weather report means overall how we are doing that's called weather report so weather means overall how are we doing if you are not doing good then weather report is bad so scrum master goal is to see this weather report are we doing good because if we are not doing good then scrum master will come up with a, some kind of way coach team inspire them enable them ask questions making sure team member understand how to be more productive make sense or no document number 1 product backlog document number 2 sprint backlog who manages product backlog who manages sprint backlog and then the last thing you get is increment increment is like after every sprint you get increment after every sprint you get increment after every sprint you get increment increment means working in progress product question in the exam when you do increment can this increment goes all the way to production to the customer can it goes to the customer answer is yes if product owner decides if product owner decide this is very useful let me give it to customer product owner decide normally he will not send but he may decides it product owner may decide that this increment is worthwhile to sending to customers otherwise product owner will wait for the release and then release he will deliver this item to customer but sometimes he may think this is very important let me deliver to customer he might deliver to customer but that is what product owner responsibility make sense now question i start this i start this sprint can i cancel the sprint this will be question in the exam can i if i start this sprint and in the middle can i cancel the sprint answer is yes you can cancel yes. who, can, who can cancel the sprint product owner can cancel the sprint only you can cancel the sprint if sprint goal if sprint goal it is not attainable it is not attainable or it is not relevant product owner has a decision listen carefully product owner has a decision to cancel the sprint product owner has a like responsibility to cancel the sprint if sprint goal is not attainable or not relevant so example i supposed to teach the class today and something happened power outage happened then what happened i as a product owner i had to cancel the class why because technically it's impossible to teach the class when the power outage happened because some of you might come here some of you may be online so that type of decisions we need to make that doesn't happen regularly but sometimes you need to make decisions questions oh, i just missed the hour um this Three this is this is this all are one for one month. This is what the, about the two weeks? Divide by two. <laughs> no, no, no. Two weeks for the last one. This restarts not expected. Yeah, this one is third. One point five. Oh, one point yeah. five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Only daily scrum you don't divide. Daily scrum will remain fixed. Doesn't matter. It's two weeks, one weeks, or five weeks. It's four weeks. It's always fifteen minutes. Yes. Question on four. good i'm hoping you guys are following right let me just quickly cover something and then we'll take a break <clears throat> first so i'll come back here do you agree that we have product backlog first from product backlog from product backlog you will go through sprint and you pick the story story 1 story 2 story 3 stories are in a business language which we call invest in west in west in west 
I stands for independent. Each story should be independent. I stands for independent. Each story should be independent. So product owner can decide this one we need to do now. This one we'll do next, later. This one will be doing each story are independent. N stands for negotiable. Negotiable means you can negotiate. Should I do now? Should I divide into? Should I break it down? Those are negotiable. Because if it is so big, I can break it down. If it is so, so small, I can combine it. So those are negotiable. V stands for value. Customers should get value. So if I do it something, business benefit has to be there. E stands for estimate. Estimate means I can estimate each story by dividing into task and I can estimate. So there are three things. Story, story normally estimated in a point. Listen carefully. Stories are normally estimated in a point and tasks are normally estimated in hours. Listen carefully, okay? In two minutes, you will be clear. So story normally estimated in points. And the points normally you follow like one, two. One plus two will be three. Three plus two will be five. Five plus three will be eight. So this is called Fibonacci series, where you get one, two, three, five, eight. This number is source complexity. It shows complexity has nothing to do with days or hours. Listen carefully. Stories are in points. Stories are in points. So point means how complex it is. So example, if I want to color the one wall, if I want to color one wall, if I want to color one wall versus I want to color entire house, which one is complex? Entire house. So if I feel the coloring the wall may be one point, then coloring entire house will be three points. It is just complexity. It has nothing to do with the day or hours. Now, can I do reverse? Painting one wall will be three days and painting one house will be one day. Can I do the reverse? No, no it doesn't make sense. Do you guys agree or not? So example, if I want to walk 100 feet versus I want to walk 10,000 feet, which one is going to complex? 10,000 feet. Do you agree? So this is called comparison perspective. We are just showing that complexity. It has no connection with days or hours. Are we clear? But every story should have a point. Because that points, listen carefully, that point will help you estimate how many points you are completing, how many points you are completing in one speed. So if you pick, let's say, example, if you say this story was one, this story was three, this story was two, so one plus three plus two, which is six. So you completed six story point in one sprint. That is called your speed. That is called your speed, which is called velocity. Speak with me, velocity. So velocity means like how fast you are completing, how fast you're completing this story point from here to here, completing. Now example, you took, let's say more story, let's example, you took like a story four also which is worth of three points, but you did not complete, then you don't get a credit. You only get a credit if you complete it. So story point helps you to calculate the velocity because if you remove the days and time, then you really talk about risk. You talk about complexity because your point of like example, Ahad. Ahad is expert and I'm a beginner. For Ahad, it will take maybe one hour. And for me, it will take eight hours. So we cannot talk hours. Do you guys agree or not? Because expertise come in picture. Do you guys agree? So if Ahad see the word, he will say, ah, one hour. If I see the word, I'll say eight hours. But if we both see the word complexity, we both will be same. He will say, ah, simple. Now he also says simple. Do you agree? So point, remove the comp expertise part and make common language, which is called complexity. That's why we use point. But when I... When I divide that story into tasks, that time we talk about hours. So if I know Ahad is going to work, then I'll say, Ahad, how long will it take? Ahad said two hours. If I'm going to work, then I'll say eight hours. Make sense or not? To common, we'll say, let's do a six hours. Because it doesn't matter, Ahad does or I do. Or it doesn't matter who does. We'll try to come up with a reasonable estimate. We can't assume based on Ahad, because Ahad is expert, but he can't do everything. So we don't consider Ahad is an expert, we consider as a normal person can do it. Make sense? 
So this is called OPM. Speak with me. OPM. OPM means O stands for optimistic. Optimistic means expert. P means pessimistic, means naive. And M means most likely. M means most likely. O stands for optimistic. O stands for optimistic. Optimistic means expert. I will do right away. That's called expert sales. Pessimistic, I have never done it. It's going to take a long time. So he's going to give you long estimate. And most likely going to give you average estimate. So example, if I expert, how long will it take? Two hours to paint the wall. So expert will say two hours. Pessimistic, never done. If you ask me, I never did painting. So I need to watch videos. I need to apply primer. I don't have tools. I need to buy the tools. So I'll say it will take eight hours. And then someone who has done the painting, they say it may take a four hours. So I combine two hours plus eight hours plus four hours. So what is that? Two plus eight, 10. 10 plus four, 14. And then divide by three. So approximately I'll say six hours or maybe five hours this work. That will be reasonable for everyone. Make sense or no? So this is the way you estimate. When you estimate, you don't estimate for optimistic. You don't estimate for pessimistic. You estimate considering everyone's voice. So that means that means that each person will do this task. The expert will get this task like uh, will get the faster. So that means he can help the other team. It's not like that. It's not like that. Whoever has availability, they can pick up the work. Yeah. Whoever is availability, think about that. You are getting calls, right? You are two people. How many people? Two people. First call, both will pick up or one person will pick up? One person. Do you know expert or beginner? You don't know. So who will pick up is busy? Yes or no? Now next, next call comes, who's going to take? Second person. Is it expert? I don't know. So the same thing, if, if this work is done by Ahad, he's busy, then other tasks will be done by someone else. But if I have estimated according to that experience, then this person can deliver it. So that's the reason we consider OPM, other people money, right? Optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely. So six hour, the guy will be comfortable to complete the work. And if he needs help, he can always talk to Ahad. But he, Ahad is not gonna do that work because Ahad is busy with task one. Task two will be done by someone else. Make sense? Question again, what is velocity? Velocity means number of story points. Number of story points. Number of story points completed in one sprint. Number of story points completed in one sprint is called velocity. So example, if you complete one sprint, listen carefully. If you complete one sprint and you completed eight points, what is your velocity? Eight, right? Next, next sprint, you think, hey, I did eight, so let's plan for eight, but you completed 10. Now, what is your velocity? 18, so eight plus 10, you plan for eight. So last time you did eight, this time you did 10. So eight plus 10, which is 18 divided by two. Nine. So nine. nine, your true velocity here is nine. So this time, how much work you gonna take? Nine, and now you deliver, let's say six. So you're gonna do again, eight plus 10 plus six. So 18, 18, 24. 24. So 24 divided by three spring eight. to eight. So Velocity is always average. Velocity is average. So in first sprint, when you complete eight point, next sprint you will plan for eight. But if you deliver more, then it's a good thing. But if you deliver less, then you take average and you plan, you continually adjust your velocity based on past performance. You're adjusting based on past performance. So they may give you example. First sprint, you are 10 points. Next sprint, you are 14 points. What is your average velocity? 12. First sprint you are 10, next you are 14. So what is your average velocity? 12, very simple. This kind of basic math you need to do sometimes. Make sense? Mm -hmm. right now we are at time on, at time to take a, like a break. But before I take a break, any last question I can answer? Uh, I just want to share. Yes, go ahead. I just wanted you to repeat for me the, the you were <coughs> defining or explaining the word investment invest invest whereby when we came from the product backlog product backlog in no, uh, nothing to do with product backlog it's yeah yes yes the, the, uh, yeah so invest you were giving it uh, how, how does it mean what does it mean 
The first letter means what? So I stands for invest. Okay. Next, you will do from homework. Okay, give me promise that you will do homework because this was the question in the homework. Okay. Right? I remember. Yes, you did not do. Right, Pinky promise. Next time you will do homework. Uh, right. By 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 tom by tomorrow at nine a.m. Yeah, please remember mind. this will be guaranteed question in the exam. Let me repeat: guaranteed question in the exam. There is no doubt. Okay. Guaranteed. Okay, I'll repeat for you. But if you do homework, it will give you double effort, double com confidence, right? First is I stands for invest. M stands for negotiable. V stands for value. E stands for estimable. I mean, it can estimate. S stands for sizable and T stands for testable. So I think it's a small, my mistake. It's a small. S stands for small and T stands for testable. Each story, you can complete that in a sprint, right? And then you can also test it out that it's working or not. And it has to be like that. Each story has to be independent. It means I can do now, this one I can do now, this one I can do later, this I can do. I can reorder any anytime because they are independent. They are independent. That's why independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, testable. In investments, independent, negotiable, valuable, small, sorry, uh, estimable, uh, small, and testable. Make sense? So let me just quickly and uh, answer this thing because there may be a couple of questions with the story. Listen carefully. Story has six type of questions. First, stories are estimated in point, not in hours. Point means complexity. Point means complexity. Story come from business. Who write normally story? Product owner writes story. Now, when you write a story, you write this way. Who needs, sorry, who needs, what they need, and why they need. Who needs, what they need, and why they need. So example. As a student, as a student means who means student. I need a PowerPoint so I can prepare for exam. Another example. As a customer, who customer? I want search functionality, product search functionality, so I can find my product. So stories are always written in three length, three form: who, what, and why. So example. As a customer, I need camera. What I need? Camera. So I take a picture of my family. Who? As a doctor, I need a, a software to capture my patient history. So who? Doctor. What? They need a system, software. Why? To capture the patient history. So stories are always written in a business language, not in technical language. Story will always have acceptance criteria. How to verify this work? Whatever work business is asking, how do we know that we have done it? So there is an acceptance criteria. Always story will have acceptance criteria. So using that acceptance criteria, QA write test cases. So if QA need to write a test case, they will read the story acceptance criteria. Now stories are written by business owner or product owner so they write on a business, so they will also give you priority. Priority means which order to do. And value means they will also give you value means benefit. So story always have value. Story always have priority. Stories are written in business language, who, what, and why. Speak with me, who, what, and why. Story always have acceptance criteria. So acceptance criteria is read by QA and QA automate that acceptance criteria and stories are measured in a point, which is called complexity. Make sense? Stories are invest. Invest means independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. Make sense? So these are the questions you may see in an exam. Trust me, exam is quite easy. Quite easy. You've already done a 60 plus homework and couple of, couple of times if you watch the recording and videos, trust me, you will be passing the exam with flying colors, flying colors. It might look like overwhelming because you are first time listening, but remember you have enough time to go through the exam. You are not gonna go exam tomorrow or you, you're gonna practice, but you have to watch. 
that's why i give you homework early so some of the things will be making sense to you when you listen right it won't be like completely brand new words to you so that's why i planted seed in your mind as a homework i knew many things i did not cover last week. so when you were doing homework you might have confusion but that confusion i'm clarifying now so before the class you got something during the class you will get something and after the class you will get something make sense so let's take a uh, what you call 10 minutes break and after break we'll continue right, good stretch people on phone give me thumbs up as long as you are with me so far awesome awesome i'm going to turn on my camera in case if it works better because now i think it seems like internet is working fine no one is complaining at least for now so let's do exercise what would be the correct answer for this question you can speak up or you can tell whichever way you want what is the correct answer discipline and consistent okay discipline and consistent that's the correct answer make sense this discipline means everything has a rule same time same thing everything is same you can use also chat room in case if you want to answer question number two what's the correct answer there is sometimes is also called as a daily scrum. daily scrum do you think it's difficult not at mm -hmm. all remember i completely understand this is new and maybe first time you're seeing maybe listening but it will not remain new okay i can give you guarantee what i repeat today some of the things i'll also repeat next week too you just need to help me by homework that's pretty much it <clears throat> next one what is the correct answer progress remember i said burn up and burn down right yeah, yeah. the burn up or burn down graph will help you for progress this is the graph scrum master manage so this one the correct answer is burn down make sense okay next one the scrum master works hard motivates the team Ooh, awesome mm -hmm. remember servant leader sorry yeah <laughs> next what value user story using in west. In west awesome next one uh user stories for the sprint are selected during planning sprint planning planning, planning. make sense mm -hmm. sorry this one is pbr no no pbr pb pbr pbr stands for product backlog refinement so whatever product backlog you have right it goes up or down that type of things is pbr backlog refinement that is done by product owner and that happens during the sprint only but no one is disturbed during that time product owner is going to do that part remember product owner can do anything but product owner mostly defined for he's preparing for the next sprint make sense or no because team is working on this sprint Product owner is working for the next sprint because he needs to be ready for the next sprint planning. Make sense or no? Okay. So like this way, what I'm talking about. Like example, if product owner say, you know what, I'm going to work this one in this sprint. My team is working on this aspect. Product owner will be focusing on the next sprint. Make sense? And then he also will be working on next. This is called how to, you know, define and prioritize. That is called product backlog refinement. Product backlog defined. Hmm. Now, Scrum Master is actually adding oil in the machine. No one reports their independent product owner gets the feature requirement from customer. Product owner is a business representative. Business representative, he represents all customers. Development team only talks to product owner if there is a customer specification. Product owner will be talking to customer and get the details to development team, but development teams are not allowed to talk to customer directly without product owner. With product owner, yes, they can. But product owner is the way they get the customer feedback. Scrum master is the one who is the coach, teacher, some uh, what you call servant leader. And when they work together, they come up with the increment. Increment is nothing but working in progress product. Working in progress product. Next, we talk about role. There are three roles, product owner, scrum master, and development. We talk about artifacts, product backlog, which is called PB sometimes. Sprint backlog is known as a SP, sprint backlog. Task board is the two, these are same. Burn down chart, it shows like overall your two weeks and total work you started with 10, 
then 10 works should be completed as you go further. So burn down chart shows when you're going to complete, right? It's going to show the progress day by day. And that will be automatically created by software. I'll show you when I do Jira. So when we do Jira after one week, I'll show you how burn down chart create. It automatically created but managed by Scrum Master. This is the graph Scrum Master manual. Activities. Activities are, we talk about activities. Sprint planning is a meeting. Meeting number one, daily scrum is a meeting number two, sprint review is meeting number three, and sprint retrospective is meeting number four. Which meeting is a process improvement? Retrospective. retrospective. This is called process improvement. And with this meeting is for product improvement. Product. And daily stand up is for development team. Is it a status meeting? No. It is a communication among team. What are the questions you ask? What did I do yesterday? What am I going to do today? And is there any roadblock? What did I do yesterday? What am I going to do today? Is there any roadblock? Okay. Next, we talk about Scrum is a framework. It is not a methodology. Are we clear? Why? Because framework allows you to do customizations. And if you customize that, it's called process tailoring. It's called process tailoring. Scrum is empirical. Speak with me. Empirical. Empirical means data driven. Empirical means data driven. So Scrum learns based on data. So example, first sprint I did eight points. Then I learn. Then I go to next. So everything is data driven. So you know that first few sprint you will be mistake. You will make more mistake. But then you will do better because you are learning from history. You are learning from history. It's a data driven. So data driven in the English word they call empirical. So example, if I'm driving car. On a freeway and I'm going towards Chicago. If I have bumper to bumper traffic, what do you learn now? I will be late. I'm driving already, right? And I'm in bumper and bumper bumper to bumper traffic. What did you learn? I will be late. That because I give you data. But if I say, hey guys, uh, I'll I'm driving, you're not learning. But if I say I'm driving and we have bumper to bumper traffic now you learn more yes or no now when i go hey guys i'm in a traffic bumper to bumper even i don't say you know that i'll be late right so everything is a data driven so now after a few minutes hey traffic is clear now what did you learn you will be on time do you agree so every few minutes you are learning so agile is all about learning and performing learning and performing agile is lightweight simple simple to understand difficult to master simple to understand it takes two days three days for us to understand but life it takes to master ask yourself question there are so many things doctor has suggested in the morning maybe drink water maybe eat apple maybe do good exercise maybe have a good diet yes or no these are a simple thing but i give you guarantee none of us follow that at least i don't eat apple every day though i know apple is good for health I have an apple at house, I see there, but I don't eat it because I don't eat it, right? So sometimes it's simple, but it's difficult to implement it. Our mind should not say, oh, it's hard. If you start with that mindset, everything will be hard. How you face the reality, it's better. So example, Scrum says, you know what? There's a lot of benefit if you follow it. But if you customize everything, then you lose the benefit. Do you guys agree? So if you want to get benefit, follow the scrum the way it is designed. And that's why rules are, rules are given. Because if you follow the rules, you get the better value. But if you customize the rules, you don't get the value. Okay? I'm going to go through some slides and I'll take a pause. Scrum can apply to any project. It can apply for marketing project. It can apply for development project. It can apply for frequent, any projects you can apply. You can also apply for any new product. You can apply for cloud product. Scrum can apply to anything. Make sense? So it doesn't need to be IT. It can be applied for non-IT also. Okay. Now Scrum has three pillars, which we call tie. Speak with me. What do we call? Tie. T stands for transparency. Everything is visible. See, you might have seen I'm very brutal on say you didn't do homework. I'm doing transparency. It's not I'm insulting you. I'm transparent. We are family. We hold each other accountable, very high standard. We want to make sure standards are high. They will brutally say, hey, you came late today. They will say, they're not going to hide. This is not the way 
like everyone get the what you call gold coin like you know if you go to school right even you do simple thing everyone get the same prize no in agile will be brutal honors like example if you are attending uh, you know family call for 2 hours people say hey are you not working they will say brutally why you are not working do you know me are working here simple so why you are not coming on time they will be brutal honors so it's transparent inspect inspect mean they will check their own progress are they doing good are they behind are they faster and they will pick up the pace and then they will adapt they will learn and adapt learn and adapt we talk about this in detail now let's go here we talk about this now product owner product owner is defining priority prioritization of features clear product owner define release date when to deliver to customer product owner also define priority for every iteration iteration is also known as a sprint so sometimes they use word iteration sometimes they call sprint and product owner accept the story work so if your story story one has acceptance criteria that is defined by product owner so product owner accept the work if this all done then story is done so every story product owner will define acceptance criteria if those acceptance criteria is done then product owner will accept the story makes sense product owner has to be visionary product owner is a value maximizer speak with me value maximizer which is another ROI return on investment return on investment they decide release we talk about and if they do review work he is a good negotiator also because they talk to business product owner talks to business and get the inputs clear now going to the product backlog who defined the product order product backlog product owner multiple scrum always have one product and multiple scrum team only have one product backlog so if you have multiple teams product backlog is one if you have multiple teams product owner is one make sense clear next product backlog if you go high more clear on the top more clear if you go bottom less clear if you go high high priority high priority if you go bottom less priority this is living and breathing document at managed done by product owner product owner can add any time they can manage at any time there is no rule or regulations any work you do in sprint backlog must come from product backlog any work you do must come from sprint backlog so product backlog item will come in sprint planning in sprint planning product owner will bring what to do and then team will take that story and break it down into task task are in hours development team define the task product owner define the story and points so story and points will be coming to product from product owner and tasks are coming from development team what and how happens in sprint backlog sprint backlog is visible story and its task one story can have many tasks one story can have many tasks and when development team works development team can work in multiple tasks but they normally work on one story with multiple tasks question in the exam can one person own one story and another person can own another story no stories are actually having multiple tasks development team can work development developer one can work on this task developer two can work on, so stories are shared among the developers tasks can be delegated to one person but story is common everyone can work the goal of exercise start what you start you finish first and then start next story makes sense so development team listen carefully development team follow pull model pull model means you take the first item complete the task once you complete it then you pull the second story and then you work on development team only take the story which is given by product owner so development team themselves do not pull anything from product backlog development team themselves do not pull from product backlog they ask product owner which one i should work on. only product owner give them and then they will they will never take more stories they will use pull model so example as soon as they are done with the work they will ask what's the next because they are highly motivated they are not going to say let's start with 10 and then deliver 5 they are not 
they will start with five and deliver ten because they are highly motivated and they follow pool model. Speak with me, pool model. Make sense? Now, you, let me give you an example. If you are going for a vending machine, everyone knows vending machine, and you are buying, let's say, you are buying, let's say, Coca Cola. So, vending machine is using push model or pull model? Push. Think about it. So, when you pay push money, right? When you push money, add money, as soon as you get a Coca Cola, there will be another Coca Cola will come. Yes or no? But it will not come unless you pull it. Do you agree? And if you don't buy, nothing will happen in vending machine. But when you buy it, when you buy it, first Coca Cola will come to you, and next Coca Cola will take that space. So who is pulling? Customer is pulling. So if customer doesn't do anything, vending machine will remain as is. Do you guys agree? Let's say example, I want jewelry, uh, some kind of gel, jewelry or ornament. I need something. So I go to maybe uh, Tiffany, right? Diamond ring, let's assume. So when I go to Tiffany, will their di diamond ring will be ready for me or I, they will make it for me? Make it for you. That's called pull model. Customer initiate. Speak with me. Customer initiate. So who is customer here? Product owner. Make sense? Push model. Example, you go to Costco. You want it or not, diaper will be there. Do you guys agree or not? Water bottles will be there. Tissue paper will be there. Why? Because everyone needs it. If everyone needs it, push model. But here we are not talking about everyone needs it. Here, product owner needs it. So what model we are using? Pull model. Pull. Moving along. Now Scrum Master. Remember Scrum Master. Scrum value. Represent management to the project. Remove impediment. This is very important. Remove impediment means roadblock. So Scrum Master role is to make sure they encourage team member. Hey, what's the problem? Team member said this is the problem. So what did you do? Why? Why it's not resolved? What else we can do? He's going to keep asking till team member take right action. If Scrum Master think that team member does not have necessary skill, then Scrum Master will help them how to solve the problem. But Scrum Master role is not to solve problem for team. Scrum Master role is to empower team and support them, coach them so they solve their own problem. Do you guys agree or not? So Scrum Master is there to coach. Ensure the team is fully functional. For so example, if your laptop is not working, Scrum Master will help you to bring the what do you call help desk guy. If your light is not working, Scrum Master will bring electrician for you. Make sense? Scrum Master is going to give you environment. And if someone is disturbing you, Scrum Master will kick that person out. Uh, guys, during development time, no one should be allowed. So Scrum Master will create a guard. So you get a quality time. Make sense or not? I have a funny video to come some slides and then we'll take a uh, discussions about questions. Development team normally are cross-functional team. They in one team, please understand, one team you cannot have a sub team. You cannot say Dave is separate, QA is separate. You cannot do that. So development team, only one title, which is called development title. There is no subtitle. There is no subgroup in one, in one team. They are full time. They are self-organizing, self-empower and trusted team. Minimum three and maximum nine. If you are less than three, if you are less than three, if you are less than three, then you have skill problem. If you are less than three, you have skill problem. And if you are more than nine, then you have communication problem. Make sense? Because the bigger the group, communication problem. Smaller than three, then you will have a skill problem. You will not be able to do the work. Make sense? So team size should be should be three or nine. So sometimes they may give you 15 members. How many scrum teams can you make? If you have 15 members, how many scrum teams can you make? You can, so, make, five, you can make five, you can make four, you can make three. Yes or no? Because you can say three members, so three times five will be 15. Yes or no? Make sense or no? Because minimum three, maximum nine. Do you guys agree? So if you have 15 members, you can create a five team. So if you go to Amazon or Facebook, the teams are three to five members only. They keep very smaller team. So they can be more productive. Make sense? 
they will have a cross functional cross functional means one ba one qa one developer one database guy the combination skills that's called cross functional that's self organizing what time to come what to make decision how to work how to organize everything they will make decision and they will trust each other they will empower each other so like example if someone doesn't know the work someone will help them they cross train each other and this is the way family works it's a bonding goal of goal of the exercise is to win together not one person winning it's winning together think about super bowl one team are doing the all effort to win the game so everyone focus on touchdown or making a goal right it doesn't matter who did what it's a team goal when you are measure progress you don't measure individual progress you measure team progress through sprint velocity when you say sprint velocity it's a team velocity it's not individual velocity we don't externally motivate team member. We don't say, hey, I'll give you $100. Hey, I'll give you this thing. No, we internally motivate them. So teams are internally motivated. They are not externally in incentivized. They are not given any money, neither any incentives outside. They are internally motivated. And our goal is to make sure team create a harmony. Now, when you start the new team, listen carefully. When you start the new team, your velocity your velocity will be like up and down like this and then slowly slowly your velocity will be like this so why your velocity is going up and down in early stage in early stage your velocity will be rookie because your estimation you don't know team member doesn't know how who does what and how so team member will go through a learning initially they will go through like model right initially they will have you hire the team right so forming will happen so you form the team right so when you form the team, no one knows each other, right? So after you form the team, after you form the team, then you will go to the next team. This is called norming. Norming means who does what. Then you will have a storming going on. Storming means fight. I don't like him. He doesn't like them. And then you will go to performing. So when you do performing, that time team does better. So this forming, norming, storming will happen in first four to six sprint. Speak with me four to six sprint this time your velocity is not predictable but after that your velocity will be predictable when your velocity become predictable when team is now in performing stage team is now in performing stage are you understanding so they may ask question can you predict based on the first sprint velocity no you do need to have four to six sprint learning which is called data which is called data and data is empirical so once you have four to six weeks of sprint velocity, then you can predict overall team velocity. Make sense? So far so good. Again, forming, norming, storming, and performing. Forming, forming means form the team. So right now we form the team. Then norming, norming means what to do, how to do. Then storming, then there will be fight, and then performing. Okay. Now let's see what correct answer for this one what is the correct answer for this one <laughs> maximum length of the screen review is four hours for a monthly screen for monthly right okay not this one next one scrum does not have a lower code project no True. no follows there is no project manager. <clears throat> Next. Uh, the three pillars of uh, inspection, transparency, <laughs> and adaptation. Inspection, transparency, and adaptation. Adaptation. E. Mm -hmm. Who is the final say? The product owner. Product owner. The product owner. Yeah. Very good. Are we understanding mm -hmm. or not? See, guys, mm -hmm. I'm doing my best. And I'm hoping you are also doing your best because yeah. what you are learning will lifetime you will be using. This. You are doing really good. So be proud of what you do. Okay. We talk about sprint planning. We talk about what versus how. Do you guys agree or not? Right. Mm -hmm. And there are two things comes out: sprint goals and sprint backlog. So sprint planning, two things: what the product owner will explain, and how the team will explain to product owner. And sprint goal and sprint backlog will be output of sprint plan. Sprint goal and sprint backlog. Now let's do here. 
who is responsible to manage the progress of work during spring? Very good. Me. Only only development team decide their progress. They own themselves monitor because they are self organizing, self discipline. Okay. Mm -hmm. Time box for daily scrum. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Which statement best describes the product owner responsibility? Optimize the value so of what the development team does. Optimize the value, Indeed. right? Yeah. yeah. It's a value maximizer. This is called burn down chart. Burn down chart means how long you have time and how much work you have done. So this is the work. So example, if you take 30 works and your sprint length is less than 20 days, just an example, then all work has to be completed in these 30, 20 days. And then you see the progress daily. And this one will help you to progress. How are we doing? Are we good? Are we behind? It will help you to monitor and measure your progress. Make sense? Monitor and measure your progress. This is called burn down chart. Burn down chart means what work is pending. So like example, the, the blue is called GPS. Blue is a GPS and red is the actual. So you know how are we doing? If I'm behind, then you know how far we need to do, pick up the pace. So kind of get your idea. So you're kind of monitoring and measuring your own progress. So you pick up the pace. Make sense? Who pick up the pace? Development team. These graph auto generated by software called Jira, which will cover that in a, in a coming class, not coming next week, week after. But if somebody asks who managed that, then that is done by Scrum Master. So Scrum Master is the one who managed this, this graph specifically. Next one. Stories are always written in who, what, why. Stories are written who, what, as a who, what, he want, and why. Remember, we talk about as a customer, I need a product search so I can buy product. And people on phone, if you are not talking, could you please mute? When you are, when you are estimating stories, you estimate story as a point. Is point means days or complexity? Complexity. And when you are when you are doing this estimation, everyone voice count, and you kind of product owner will explain the story, development team will understand, and then they will estimate the point. If there's a gap between one person versus other person, then there will be discussion. And again, there will be a re-estimation. And you try to bring people together and then estimate. You are not gonna estimate based on expert. You are not gonna estimate based on the beginner. You are not going to estimate based on the average, but you will consider everyone's point of view and then estimate it. Make sense? This exercise sometimes they call planning poker. What do you call? Planning poker. I'll cover that in next class also. Don't worry. I just want to give you an idea. OPM. Optimistic means less time. Pessimistic, more time. More likely, average time. So we consider everyone's point of view and then we estimate it. Velocities are always average. When you start, your velocity will be unpredictable. But as you go further, your velocity will become predictable. If your velocity is like this all the time, what does it mean? Um, it means team is mature or not mature. So if you are continuously like this, then team is not learning. Team is really not learning. If you miss one time, homework is okay. Second time you are missing, okay. But if you continuously miss, I will stop talking to you. Trust me. Because if you don't care your career, why would I, right? Suddenly everyone think like that. So you will have rookiness. Rookiness means no one cares about the improvement. Make sense? But if teams start like this and suddenly then happen this, are they learning? Of course they are learning. Make sense? So you will start with rookiness, but then slowly your average will be predictable. Um, on the, the example that you showed, they did they, 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 they improve and then They, are, they do wrong estimation. So like example, uh, like one point, you should take maybe approximately one or two days, but you, you like example, one point you can do one or two days, but if I say 10 point and I finish in one day, it will go up. Yes or no? So it's wrong. They're not learning. They're doing wrong thing. Uh, you're understanding, right? Because improvement should be visible. Improvement doesn't disappear. Right, it should be visible. So, like example, if you are running for ten miles every day, 
after a month or two months, you might be running 12 miles. Yes or no? Yeah. Suddenly you say five miles now running, that's not good, right? Yeah. So improvement is normally sustainable, right? And you need, you need, you need, you need to be consistent. Right? Correct, correct. Now daily scrum, what is the time? 15, 15 minutes. minutes. And what are the three questions? What are they did yesterday? What are they going to do next? And is there any road plan? It on time, on topic, 1% talks, right? Risk and other things they discuss after the meeting. So if there is a risk, they will talk after the meeting. Okay? Daily Scrum is not a status meeting. Remember that. Daily Scrum is not a status meeting. Okay? So we don't have status meeting at all, right? Mr. No status meeting. If somebody wants to know, they will check the Scrum board. They will check the Scrum board. Scrum board will show what is in progress, yeah. what is done, who is working what, Scrum board. If they want to know more, they can join daily scrum. They don't speak. If they want to see the demo, they come on a, a spin demo, right? But there is no reports. There is no status report in Agile. It's all transparent. You can come and see, observe scrum board. Can one team member text another team member to ask a question? Ideally, we shouldn't be because we are sitting next to each other. Yes or no? We are sitting next to each other, so we should not be texting. We should talk, but like go and talk. But if a person is like remote, then yes, you can use chat. Can we talk after? So we can talk after the meeting. Like let's say, like I'll quit a person. You should. You are sitting next to each other. You should. I said I'm sitting next to you. Yeah. Makes sense or no? If person is remote, then yes, you can call or you can chat. Because then you have to use tools because you are not able to stand and go and talk, right? Yeah. In agile, we focus on face-to-face -face conversation. Face-to-face. Mandatory product increment be really not mandatory. It depends depends on product owner. Which one below our role of Scrum Master? That's B, C, okay. and okay. E. Okay. So development team, Scrum Master, and product owner. Very good. What about okay. this one? That's a D. M. Light so you can understand. Increment means the last. Every sprint, when you complete, you get increment. Make sense? That's a working product. Product owner may decide to release. Now, I just, I'm, we are almost on time, so I just want to make sure you understand. Uh, let me repeat some of the questions here. Let me. So, what is the correct answer here? D. He has in David. What is the correct the framework, framework within framework complex products. When the time box expires. Sprint is like fixed. If you are not able to done, you're done. Like that. So if you are, let's say if you took a five story and you did not complete fifth one, then that story will go back to product backlog. And mm -hmm. then it's up to product owner to decide should we work on next sprint or no. Mm -hmm. Team cannot work on the next sprint. So any unfinished good any unfinished story will go back to product backlog. Then product owner will decide, should we work on this item on the next sprint or not? But team cannot decide. Okay. What would be the correct answer on here? C. 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 Eight Very hours. Good. Sorry, my mistake. C. The C. C. Mm -hmm. C. Yeah, perfect. Now, and this is the retrospective. Retrospective is like this way. What should we start? What should we stop? And what should we continue? This is normally happen last meeting of the sprint and before the next meeting. And this is normally help you for improvement. Make sense? Now, a couple of announcement before we, a definition of done, who defines? Scrum team means everyone. Product owner will be participating. Scrum master will be participating. Development team will be participating. This is what ideal good quality software for quality software what we need to do they define doesn't the development team decide the yeah. definition of that normally normally product owner and scrum master also have a say in that because product owner may say that hey i need this thing in a done scrum mm -hmm. master say this is a good thing to do and development ideally development team does but product owner and scrum also participate there hey, Tusha, when they assign points to uh do they take development team's input 
for yes. any story yes. or, the, or just the product owner decides it. It's a negotiable. So product owner may say two point, but development seems say, hey, this looks like complex. It's actually supposed to be three. Right, the point. Initially, product owner will start, but then development team participate and then they revise this point if they feel it's complex. Yes, any other questions? Good. Your project is there, but don't worry about project for right now. Right now, okay? So there are rules. Don't worry about the project and all. We'll discuss more next week. I want you all to start a computer. If you are in a Google class, in a Google class, and if you have access to Agile, if you have access to Agile Scrum board, click on classwork. Go to classwork. And in, you go to classwork. If you go to classwork, in classwork, uh, sorry, sorry, what's the question? One second, one second, one second. Hello, hello, please, please pay attention. I want to make sure you all listen and understand correctly. So I'm sorry, I will go to classwork. And yeah. Then, uh, then you are in a scrum part two. Okay. Now relax and pay attention for a few minutes, please. I want you to. Understand because there are two things you need to do. First thing, there are pre work. Okay, I'm going to focus on quiz right now because once you start quiz, I cannot speak. So I, I just want to make sure. Are you breaking? Can you repeat, please? I am, I'm, I'm repeating, please. Please listen. I'm going to show you something because some of you already made a mistake not to doing homework, right? So that part, you can correct it. Some of you are going to do quiz and some of you are going to do preparation for PSL. Now, what I have done here, I have added Agile Scrum preparation steps. Listen carefully. Now, if you click on it, you will see, you will see a couple of forum. Are you guys able to see or no? See it yourself. Agile Scrum preparation. These are the things I already prepared for you for PSM certification. Listen carefully. These, it's our Infotech forum. You do need to sign up for this. Most of you sign up and I have get approved. So right now I'm going to show you just so you can understand. So if I click on Agile Scrum certification, if I click on it, it will go to the forum. Just for two minutes, you go to the forum. And in this forum, I explain about some of the things which I cover. It will speed up your learning process quickly. Go through that. It will not take more than 10 minutes to 15 minutes to go through that. Some of the key item I added here, key item. You can just read it quick, quickly. So it will give you idea, perspectives, what we cover about it. Make sense? It will quickly prepare you some of the basic concept. That's the forum one. Now the forum two, is much more detail about exam preparation videos and all. And there is a link for the quiz. So if you go here, exam, you are not going to go for exam next week. Please understand. Next week, I'm going to review again some of the concept. Much more practical form, so it will be much more easier and understand. Next week also, I'm going to repeat. I'm going to explain more. Don't worry about it. You will do exam after I complete the next week. But before you should work the way I'm asking you to do, because it will help you to prepare the exam very fast and you will get the certification quickly. Exam is 60 minutes and 80 questions. So it's a very fast pace. So we need to be very fast to get this going, right? Now, don't worry about registration. You should watch this video, which we talk about it. But this video has 20 to 25 questions, even though it's a five minute video. All these videos are going to prepare you now, as you go further, there is a link here. So if you see here, there are some links are there. I put like some links for practice tests and all. So you can practice tests and all. These are free sample quizzes are there. So you can practice some quizzes when you get time. But if you read that, I said this link is a free. So you can try this free links. 
there are three links there that you can read about it and you can try. But right now, we are going to do this free Scrum open test. So I'm going to click on this link. I'll put in a chat room also. So if I click on that, I'll go here. And I'll put in a chat, chat in the chat also. And I'll also submit in the Google class also. Just bear with me. You all get an email in right away. So I'm going to post it. You all get an email. You can use on a phone. You can use on your computer. You should have received email now. Click on the link. And when you click on the link, it will take you to the it will take you to the Scrum this page. If you are there, I want you to start continuing, relax and do your best. Okay. Don't worry about project. Don't worry about other things. Just relax and do the 30 minutes. I'll put the video recording in the Google Classroom.